Matt Rule and staff have been working hard at 2024 for quite some time, but now comes the first fruits of their labor. We will talk uh, Nebraska's first hard commit for the 2024 class on Huskers Live here for the next 60. Welcome in, everyone. Leave those comments and questions there in the live chat. You will know that we will get to them. We got Greg Peterson on the line as always. And without Greg, we don't have a show. So we appreciate Greg being here. Catch his work on Husker Online video right here on YouTube. Greg, what's going on? Good evening, America. <laughs> <laughs> now we're just uh, enjoying, you know, like a 50 degree day here in, in February and uh, all is well. And heck, we get, even get to go uh, another press conference tomorrow and uh, round out the uh, end of the uh, coaching staff with uh, strength and conditioning coach and uh, linebackers coach. And then Donnie Rayola, Un Uncle Donnie, will uh, actually talk. So, uh, yeah, you know, we're, uh, we're having fun getting to the end of winter as we move to spring ball. It's funny you bring up the temperature there in the heartland because here in beautiful Northeast Ohio, I looked up because we've had some nice sunny days here, but I don't know if it's going to be like, I like to start going for walks when it gets to be at least in the fifties and it's been kind of touch and go, like, it'll look beautiful outside and I'll check and it's like 37. I'm like, I don't want to go for a walk, but then other days I'll check and be like 56. Okay, let's, let's go. And so today, you notice know, nice sunny day. And I looked, and then when I looked at the forecast, and it, it was about 50 out, uh, I looked at the forecast on Thursday, it's going to be 70. Ooh. On Friday, 30. <laughs> that doesn't happen that often. That's crazy. Yeah, it happens around here quite often. Really? Right? Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't happen like that. My goodness, not around here. Huh, huh. All right. Well, so I'm going to brace myself for that and take advantage of Thursday for sure. Yeah, I wouldn't. I would do the same. Well, as we mentioned off the top, everyone, uh, the first commit for 2024 is in the house. Yeah. And he's out of surprise, 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 Texas. <laughs> I think there's going to be a lot of these from Texas, as there was uh, in the closing run for Matt Rule in the 23 class. Roger Gradney, he's the 24th rated athlete in the country. He's a top 300 player, 242, number 43 in Texas. So this is a firm four star right there. And that's a really good uh, get to start off the class. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I don't think there's probably not a heck of a lot of people that even know where Garwood, Texas is. But uh, obviously Matt Rule and Bob Wagger and, uh, and crew do know where that is, uh, you know, down in the <laughs> middle of nowhere, uh, you know, San Antonio type uh, region. And um, no, you know, they're getting them. They're getting a heck of a player that that completely fits the Matt Rule uh, profile of, of what he goes out and gets. I mean, you know, this guy is uh, yeah, he's ranked uh, you know across the board. I think we've on three, I think we've got him ranked about 194 or something in the country. Mm. Uh, but he's a consensus to top 250 player in the country. Um, and, and one of those guys that, that uh, can just fly, you know, a track guy that can fly. And uh, it's a, it's a guy that uh, he's known a, a, as a return man. Um, if you watch his film, he's very spectacular at returning kicks and, um, you know, you add a guy like that on there, especially as your first commit of the season, um, you're kind of setting the tone here because, you know, if you look at the recruiting class that, that Matt Rule brought in um, that just finished up, that, you know, you see a bunch of track guys on there. And, and this is another one of them that uh, you're going to add to the mix. Probably, uh, you know, probably projects as a corner if you're going to give them a position ranking, but this is a guy that they're going to, that they're going to count on um, in their return game very heavily once he gets to Lincoln after his uh, senior year of high school, but uh, really good get. And uh, you know, they, they, they are out 
enforce recruiting already in the 2024 class, like we've already talked about. And, um, you know, heck, like I had mentioned before, you know, myself and Sean, my boss, Sean Callahan, and, and our recruiting analyst, uh, Brian Munson, had just finished up our in state tour. Um, you know, we had a stop in Omaha where, you know, we saw a good 17, 18 schools and uh, in Lincoln here, another 15 or 16. So we, we have seen 30 plus 30 high schools that we visited with their head coaches and their top players. And across the board, I've never seen, I mean, we've been doing this for 20 years and across the board, it is incredible with uh, the amount of athletes that have already have D1 offers across the state. So, I mean, the type of athletes getting a lot better here in the state of Nebraska. And, and the refreshing thing is, is that Matt rule and his staff have are on top of all of them and have made them all a priority. So, you know, you nab, you nab a, a, your first commitment out of the state of Texas. And that kind of, like I said, it's kind of sets the tone here. And, um, you know, kids that grew up around here that have always dreamed about playing for Nebraska, you know, it, it looks like that's, uh, a way bigger possible possibility than it used to be uh, just a few years ago um, for in-state prospects. So great start for uh, the class and Matt Rule's staff. And, um, you know, you're going to see a lot more of this uh, as time goes on. Four offers for Gradney. Uh, the other three, not anywhere close to the Nebraska level of play. Campbell, Texas Tech, UTSA. And then we also see that, of course, he was a big track guy, 22.41 in the 200 meters, 10.88 in the 100 meters, discus, triple jump, as you would expect. Uh, yeah, qualified for the Texas 3A state uh, track and field championships in the 100 and 200 meters as a sophomore. Yeah, so... We also have, let's see, his stats. Uh, an ad came up. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. This past season as a sophomore, three carries, 25 yards, touchdown, caught 13 passes for 241, about 18 yards per catch, two touchdowns. And then, yeah, all-purpose yards, tons of yards in the punt and re kickoff return game, over 1,000 yards. There you go. Oh, yeah. And, and, you know, if you look at his film, there's a highlight of a 94-yard kickoff return. It was pretty amazing. You know, averages around 30 yards per kick return and, and 35 per punt return. So, you know, you know, this is a guy that knows how to, uh, you know, get, get the ball up the field on special teams. So, um, you know, this is a, like I, I kind of mentioned earlier, I, this is a direct result of Bob Wagger and, and Garrett McGuire, you know, being two very highly recognized uh, coaches from the state of Texas that, that have their claws into every program in the state and, and knows every single player in, in every class. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 just kind of you know Nebraska flexing their muscle now um, in the recruiting game down in the state of Texas now, and when, when now they actually do have a pretty darn good advantage that they ha they haven't been dealing with for a while. Bonelead Corn Fed has uh, obviously taken in my uh, coaches' rankings videos where I've got Matt Rule ranked number twenty three in the country. So. There it is. Folks, I'll drop the link in the chat. You can check it out, see if I missed it, or uh, you want to throw uh, tomatoes and orange peels at me. <laughs> I thought it was pretty fair, though. Matt Rule at 23. Maybe I'll pull that up at some point. I'll pull up my list and see what uh, see what you think of it. Yeah, I haven't seen it, so I, I can't comment on it at the moment. <laughs> all right folks leave those comments and questions there in the live chat we will get to them and uh yeah the first commit for 2024 out of texas and uh again i'm always curious to see the differences in the various rankings because if on three 
has Gradney at 195, and he's at 242 in the composite. And get this, 24-7's got him at, they've got him at 155. Mm. So that means the other two, it's rivals in ESPN, right? Or uh, 24-7. Well, yeah, 24-7 on three. Aren't those, or is it just rivals? 24-7 and rivals are separate, yes. And sure. On, and on three, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and ESPN's in that composite, right? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, they, they just, they don't, they don't go all, they don't go into it as far as uh, the other three do. But sure, yeah. but. Yeah, yeah, they do count. Yeah, I'm just trying to, yeah, <laughs> to determine who's in the composite. Um, and, and how far they've got to have, if you've got one at 155 and one at 195 and he's at 234 in the composite, that means he's at like 400 in the other two. Uh, it just goes to show you who doesn't, uh, pay much attention than the other services do, I guess. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of analytics involved in it and it's involved with the amount of people that you have covering recruiting across the nation and uh the one four letter uh entity that we're talking about does not have a lot of resources into their recruiting uh, anymore so so are you <laughs> telling me that that maybe their attention is in a lot of other things and they yeah. think they can just throw out a recruiting site and just people will believe them just because of who they are yeah pretty okay. much they used to be they used to try to be competitive in it now they don't anymore so <laughs> i gotcha folks we appreciate you being here leave those comments and questions we do have a comment in here from dion about dylan rayola canceling a trip to georgia i don't know Aww. anything about that myself but uh that would be a shame yeah that's that's a bummer <laughs> I, well, our, I mean, you know, with that that the changeover with the offensive coordinator, Georgia, yes. you know, it's, I, you know, I I don't really know the particulars of the cancellation on it or anything, but uh, I, I I can just say this: that Georgia's still up there uh, on you know his top five schools, obviously. But uh, yeah, you, you don't know um, what the circumstances are around some of that. You know, kids are busy right now. Um, the kids are always busy. So, yeah, it's hard to say. Yeah, you know, I mean, and you're talking about going from, uh, you know, Chandler, Arizona, down to, to Athens, Georgia as well. And um, sometimes travel is very difficult, which you know. <laughs> and I know those flights are, from what I hear, I haven't, when's the last time I flew? I can't remember the last time I flew. I was flying so much for there for a few years, and now it's been maybe a year since I flew, something like that. Anyway, um, it, 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 I mean, you know, that's, it's getting expensive, like well, really yeah. expensive. Well, yeah, but that's pretty easy, though. I mean, you're basically flying from Houston to Atlanta is all you're doing. But uh, yeah. <laughs> So there it is, Greg. I'm not going to take you. For, I, I could Phoenix to Atlanta. I, I hope I said that right. Did I say Houston? Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. yeah, I was going to say that's a long drive from oh. Arizona. No, you're flying from Phoenix to, to Atlanta. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, so unless you want to, we won't go through the entirety of all these uh, coaches rankings here. But uh, our buddy there in the live chat was uh, referencing. So, so there's kind of the middle right there after the top 20. And uh, maybe I'll blow that up a little bit. I got, again... Those notes there were just talking points for my video, but uh, yeah, it's a difficult process. I will say that, you know, certainly folks can criticize me and that's why I'm here. But uh, yeah, anyone from like somewhere in the teens all the way up to like 35 or 40, there's like that much difference. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're usually, you're looking at probably mid-range rankings guys that end up winning coach of the year most of the mm -hmm. time too. sure so, that's true yeah we'll see <laughs> well yeah uh matt rule would be in prime position to do that if he has a big year oh yeah yeah, yeah those are the guys that win it's sunny dykes he takes over a five and seven team 
He goes to the college football playoff. He's oh. coach of the year. Those are the guys that win it. Nick Saban doesn't win coach of the year. Not anymore. No, no. He's already proven himself. Yes. <laughs> but uh, Matt rule, two program builds. And uh, when I say he has everything at Nebraska, except recruiting, what I'm saying there is again, again, these are just talking points, notes that I was, so I could talk off the top of my head. So, uh, I didn't know that people were going to see these, but basically that, um, that, uh, you know, that, that's the challenge. That's the one challenge at Nebraska is there's just not enough players in the state or in the surrounding states. But other than that, the NIL, the resources, the facilities, the money, the, the brand, the, the tradition, the fan support, all of it's there. Well, and I mean, uh, you had a negative there was the the amount of athletes and stuff. Uh, you got to kind of think right now, Nebraska needs to cut 15 players from <laughs> what they have right now, mm. uh, you know, by the end of spring. So uh, they definitely have uh, plenty of bodies. And um, I mean, the day of the Nebraska having a, a roster of 150 players on it, it those are no more anyway, but um, yeah, they, they've they've definitely already flexed their recruiting muscle by the way they came in and handled things for the 2023 class, and, and they're already off to a pretty good start. And like I just mentioned, that around the state is just I, I am just shocked by the amount of talent now that we're seeing. Like I said, we've been doing this in state tour for 20 years, and you know, you're usually in the past. I mean, you only had D1 offer guys at this point of the year, probably in about, I don't know, five to 8% of the schools that we've talked to. Now I'd say it's about 90%. I mean, it's just a drastic uh, increase on uh, actual talent coming out of uh, all parts of the state right now. Do you think that's a one-off? Do you just think this is a good year for oh, talent? It's just been building year after hmm. year. It's just been getting better and better. And um, you know, I, this is this year is is gonna I think top last year. And and you already saw they got a good haul of in-state guys from last year. A lot of guys on the offensive line, and um, which you know Nebraska built their tradition on was. Uh, getting those in-state offensive linemen and developing them into NFL players. So um, I, I like the direction that things are going right now, um, especially with the, with the youth movement of the coaching staff that is uh, completely fired up about recruiting and, and really does enjoy that aspect of their job. So that's got to be that, that somebody – push some kind of initiative to improve the high school football in Nebraska? Uh, yeah, I think it's been, it's been building and, and you got to give a lot of credit to, there's a lot of head coaches around the state that are excellent, excellent coaches and, and teachers and, and, and able to develop talent. Um, and, and I really, I credit a lot of it to, uh, a lot of the uh, training facilities that are now around that have former Husker players and, and former NFL players that, that help train all the athletes now, uh, especially in Omaha and Lincoln. And um, yeah, it, it's just uh, it, kids have a lot more opportunities these days uh, to develop their game. And, and there, there's been more of an emphasis on being able to work on football year round. Um you know, back back in my day, um, everybody was a three sport athlete. Everybody, that's what you did. Nowadays, uh, you know, guys that concentrate on football, they're not going to be three sport athletes anymore. They might do two. I mean, two is very doable. Um, but yeah, you know. The athletes these days realize that they need to be working on football year round if they want to excel at it. And that's what they've been doing. Um, and I'll just point out one position group that's really strong here is the quarterback position. I mean, it's it's crazy how many 
quarterbacks that we have talked to in the last couple of weeks that all fit a mold where, you know, they're all big guy, you know, six, two to six, four quarterbacks that all can sling it. And, um, it's a very deep class coming out of the state here this year and next, um, at, at that position, which I, I, you're not used to seeing that very often. So I just, uh, you know, national exposure it has changed everything where, 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 you know, schools from out of state now notice a lot of these Nebraska athletes and they've made a huge effort to come in and visit them. I mean, Across the board, from all these schools we've talked to, um, you know, you've had several top uh, college programs that have been to visit the high schools around here already, multiple times even, some of them. So um, there's an emphasis now nationwide on a lot of these Nebraska athletes now that I've never seen before. Now, speaking of which, speaking of quarterbacks, and former Nebraska ties. It's kind of funny that Adrian Martinez gets selected yeah. by the USFL's New Jersey right. Generals. And who's the head coach? Mike Riley. Hey, hey. yeah, shocker. I, yeah, that was pretty funny. But, you know, um, yeah, good for him. Um, go play some football. You know, obviously, Coach Riley knows Adrian pretty well. And um, they always uh, had a really good relationship. And, you know, you've seen Adrian Martinez can play. Um, this is his durability issue issues are always what's been in question. Um, but obviously, yeah, I, I think that's a great, uh, a great opportunity for Adrian and, uh, you know, another former Husker is still on that team. I just, cause I just asked, um, just Sunday here, I was talking to, uh, oh, is the head coach at, uh, Lincoln North star who has, um, a lot of former Huskers on there. And uh, I asked uh, one of his, one of his coaches is Alonzo Moore. And so I asked, Hey, is Alonzo going to uh, play in the USFL again this year? He's like, yep. He leaves in two weeks. So, you know, he's another New Jersey general there, you know, a, a long time Husker stud and, and, you know, NFL, former NFL player too. So uh, yeah. Adrian Martinez can hook up with Alonzo Moore this this summer here in the USFL. Is Moore going to be able to play in the USFL and still come back to coach? Oh yeah, obviously, yeah, absolutely, yeah. That's what all these guys do. Josh Banderas, you know, does the same thing. He coaches, you know, he helps out at Oregon State and uh, plays in the USFL as well. So yeah, I mean, you got you know Tommy Armstrong, former Husker quarterback. Uh, He's the offensive coordinator here at Lincoln North Star High School, and he plays in the uh, in the Arena League for the Omaha Beef as well. So, yeah, a lot of former Huskers play for the Omaha Beef. Yeah, I just didn't know how long this season was going to last in the USFL. Obviously, they're not going to compete with the NFL. So, no, no, that, is... that's, yeah, those those seasons are are much shorter. I think they only play what about ten regular season games or something like that. So, yeah. Ron is asking, everyone knows we need to see vast improvement to attract the likes of Dylan Rayola, but realistically, how many wins do you think it will take this year to make us a serious consideration for top recruits? Seven. I, I like the number seven to uh, show what you can do. And, you know, anything over that, uh, you're definitely, uh, you know, out kicking your coverage, I would think. But, um, no, I, I think recruits really would take notice of, uh, you know, a seven-win season, you know, make it to a bowl game and, and perform well and um, show signs of improvement that uh, things are only going to get better. So, and, and, you know, I mean, top recruits are are already paying to attention to Nebraska as it is. I mean, obviously, if you've got the number one player in the country – with uh, Nebraska in their top three, um, I think you've already got the attention uh, of some of the top recruits, and especially if you can land him. Uh, we've all seen what that does to, to people's recruiting classes, is that uh, other top guys want to come and play with that guy. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's it's going to be uh, it's going to be fun to watch, and you know, it was pretty funny. Like I mentioned uh, Sunday, we did our 
you know, our in, in state tour event here in Lincoln and, and Brian Munson, our recruiting analyst, you know, he, he was in from Dallas to, uh, to be here. And, um, he was, he was about ready to drive back. And you know, he's, he's from Nebraska. His, his son is at, at, at the university of Kearney here. Um, but he was going to drive back, uh, you know, start his drive back Sunday after he was done, uh, uploading his information into the system from, from the event. And, um, on my way out the door, I was like, all right, um, hopefully next time I see you that we'll be, uh, you know, we'll see each other down in Phoenix. And, um, he didn't put two and two together at the moment. He started talking about, um, kids that he wanted to see. And I'm like, well, no, I'm talking about going to see Dylan. And he's like, oh yeah, exactly. I mean, so I'm like, yeah. If uh, he pulls the trigger, I mean, we're obviously we're gonna be down there, uh, you know, and see him play here this season. So, um, yeah, we've already got that uh, on the back burner. So, um, hopefully that that happens, and uh, we'll we'll be down there and can do a complete feature on Dylan on one of his game nights. Folks, looking for a sponsor here at the Voice of College Football, we can certainly let you know uh, what we can deliver for you, your business, uh, or if there's a business that you know of out there that you've got some kind of connection to that you can let us know about. Just uh, contact us at TV at Gmail. And yes, to get Nebraska back to a bowl game for the first time in 2016. It's been a long drought. It's the longest in the country, I think. Ah, don't in the Power Five. Uh, Yeah. Actually, last time that last time that I've ever been to Nashville, and I lived there for ten years, and just sold my house there a a month ago. (laughs) You just sold it a month ago. Yeah, I did. Okay. Without even having to go down there, so. Let's see. I thought we had another question in here. Uh, (laughs) No word on Mickey Joseph. I think he's still waiting trial. I don't don't know. (laughs) Yeah, uh, I don't know about that one. Do not see there uh, and whether... Scott Frost got hired. We would have seen that. No, yeah, he has not. He's so enjoying the uh, dry heat down in, in Phoenix. Yeah, and the deal is, is that you know, if you leave a job like Nebraska and you you got uh, a huge buyout, even if you want to turn around and work again, don't you? Typically, isn't it in the contract that you got to forfeit a percentage of that buyout if you take another job within a certain amount of time? So let's say you're getting $20 million that gets slashed to $10 million if you take another job and the next job's not going to pay enough money for you to make up for that loss. So hey, that's yeah. why you see a lot of these guys have to sit out for a year or two. Ed Ogeron. I just heard the other day wants to coach again, but I think it's more about the buyout and him having to forfeit. Some every, of that. Not, every everybody's contracts different. We don't really True. know the particulars of every one of them. Yeah. All right, folks. <laughs> If we don't have anything else, when are we going to start these position previews? Ah, whatever. When when are you ready to deliver one? <laughs> Next week? It's your show. Yeah, I thought we were doing it tonight. But, are know. we going to do one tonight? What do you want to do? Quarterbacks. We said quarterbacks, right? Well, yeah, we can do that. Here I'll we go. Be. Well, yeah, that was another the big news today. Oh, okay. I didn't see. It was... Casey Thompson put out on Twitter that he's back and uh, he's healthy, ready to go for spring ball, which All right. we, we didn't know if he would be or not. Okay. Well, that's big. Casey Thompson going to be participating in spring ball. 
All right. <laughs> All right. So that leads us right into our quarterback competition and our quarterback conversation. And certainly I got to think there was a little bit more motivation for Casey Thompson to decide to come back knowing that Jeff Sims is also in the running. So we got Sims, the more mobile of the two quarterbacks and based on what I've seen, Casey Thompson's a better quarterback throwing the football downfield and new offensive coordinator coming in, of course, as well. So all those variables come into play. So Thompson versus Sims. What are you looking at here, Greg? Well, I mean, obviously that's uh, like everybody thinks that that's going to be the battle. Um, you know, I, and here in Casey Thompson, uh, you know, cause we did it. We had Casey Thompson at our event last Tuesday night and uh, you know, he, he thinks of this team as his, I mean, obviously going in, you know, he, he's not going to shy away from competition for his job, but uh, he believes that he's the quarterback here. I mean, he, he proved uh, that he can uh, play at a high level last year. And uh, if you have an improved uh, offensive line that can um, protect him a little bit better than who knows, um, you know, Jeff Sims, obviously we know that there's a, pretty prolific guy uh in the run game and the pass game and um you know you got two seasoned guys that have played a lot of football as as power five players and um that's gonna be i think that obviously all eyes are on that uh competition you know day one of spring ball and uh, I, I got to imagine that that's going to be the headline news uh, about every day coming out of spring camp. So um, it's going to be a cool, very cool matchup to watch uh, unfold. And, you know, what I like about it, too, is that you have you have a lot of guys. You have a lot of quarterbacks right now in that room. And, um, you know, common sense tells you that they're all not going to be here after spring ball. So. It's going to be a very heated uh, competition, and, and I know they're all ready to, to take on the challenge and try to make that job theirs. Um, you know, when you sit when you, when you're talking about Casey Thompson and, and Jeff Sims, and then you know you got to throw in Chubba Purdy in there too, who's also another very talented guy in that room, and um, you know Logan Smothers and Heinrich Harburg also to other very talented quarterbacks in their own rights too. So, and, and don't forget about Richard Torres as well um, that, that, you know, was injured all last year, but um, you know, he's obviously going to get a look as well. So, you know, that's, that's a pretty full quarterback room that you have right now. And, and I know Matt rule has already talked about that and he likes that. He, he really likes having, he, you know, he values quarter. Well, obviously yeah, everybody values the quarterback spot. But, um, you know, he, he loves what he has right now. And um, we'll, we'll just have to see how this shakes out here when, when spring ball starts, really. Ron is asking, what odds do you give KC and Jeff Sims, respectively, to be QB1 on opening day? I'm going to go 70-30 KC Thompson. That's about what I would say. Um, and I'll add one other thing that on there that I, I heard earlier today that was kind of interesting to think about was that there was the question that was raised. Is, um, if you go into do, what, what kind of chances are going into opening day that, uh, you're, you're trying out a two quarterback system, um, which I know everybody kind of cringes at most of the time. And, and I, I, I do obviously. And I think you don't really want to have to be in that situation. I think you want to have the clear cut guy. Um, starting off the season like that and uh yeah right now i mean without you know personally seeing jeff sims and what he can do that i i would definitely give that about a 70 30 maybe even 80 20 uh percentage on casey thompson being in that that starter on opening day but uh, we had a long way to go until that i mean you got spring spring practice to go through and then fall camp so uh we'll see and uh you know how how much injuries play into things too. I mean, you can always, 
you know, is get banged up and uh, take yourself out of the running for that at any time. Somebody here was asking how many quarterbacks are on the roster. I am working on that right this second. Yeah, you got the five that I just named off, and uh, I don't know, there's a couple more as well. I don't. Uh, I could pull up the roster. Myself. We've got Cooper Houseman, oh, Chuck Purdy, Cooper, <laughs> Mikey <laughs> Pauley. <laughs> Logan Smothers, Heinrich Harburg, Casey Thompson, Richard Torres, Jeff Sims. Two, four, six, seven, eight. That's a lot of quarterbacks. <laughs> so Richard Torres obviously had his first season, but he couldn't part. Was, was he able to come back and... No, he didn't play. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't. Well, I know he didn't play, but he didn't practice at all or anything. Uh he he was practicing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he suited up on game day and okay. everything. But uh, yeah, no, he was never really. He was never uh, basically cleared by the coaches to actually participate in in, in contact and stuff, and so that's kind of way the way that. You know, he just wasn't going to be ready physically. Um, and I know there are a lot of redshirt freshman quarterbacks that start for really good programs. I'm not saying that he's got a good shot at it because obviously the other two guys have so much more experience. But well, I mean, I, I am the I watched Richard Torres play his final game that he's played. Um, you know, which was his, his senior year in high school when he got hurt. So uh, he has not played a game since then. I, in my mind, he doesn't even factor into it. He's just a nice piece to have there uh, as a, a developmental guy. Um, he's still very raw, very raw in my opinion. Um, and, you know, played at a, at, a, at a smaller level in Texas, you know, out of a school in San Antonio that, um, quite frankly, wasn't very good, um, you know, and, and and never had any real talent to throw to on his high school team. He, he was throwing it to a bunch of midgets, basically. Um, so, you know, it, it's a big step up from where he came from to, to being in a program where you're not physically ready to play yet because of you're, you're coming off of an injury. And, um uh, you know, we'll see what he we'll, we'll see what kind of teeth he has here when spring ball starts and when he's fully healthy and, and can actually uh, kind of show off what uh, you know his skill set is. So I, I'm not trying to sound bad or negative against Richard Torres or anything, but you know he he's at this point of his career he's a project, right? Every Tuesday, folks, we do this. Every Tuesday, we've done it 112 consecutive weeks, regardless of what's going on. So started back in 1883, didn't we? 1883, yeah. <laughs> we, we might have a few more than 112 at that point, but it almost seems like it was 1883. So... No electricity, no internet, but we still made it work. We still did it. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's how we roll. There's our quarterback preview, everyone. <laughs> running backs next week. How's that sound? Sounds good to me. Come on back, everyone, for running backs. Another another loaded room. Another and, and maybe we'll do two positions next week. Yeah, the next two are definitely loaded rooms. Even the next, the one, next one after that. <laughs> no, it, it's just I really like. I mean, I'm not, you know, a little segue here. I'll just I, I like what they've done here with the recruiting class, with uh, some of those key pieces that they've added, and uh, <laughs> you know, yet you. Uh, I think you've really uh, you've improved a lot of your skill positions, especially at the tight end spot, and you've brought in a ton of receivers, a bunch of fast guys. And so, I mean, 
all these all these rooms, all these position battles are going to be really really fun to see uh, unfold here once we start spring ball. So uh, I can't wait, folks. You can help us grow the show by going out on whatever social media platforms that you frequent. Let's say you've got a Facebook group, a Nebraska Facebook group. Uh, drop the link there. Let everyone know that we're here talking Huskers every Tuesday. You can also just shoot, call people, text them. If you got Nebraska football yeah. friends, and we got other fan bases that drop in here. So if you've got any college football friends, or of yeah. course on social media, bring them by every Tuesday. And, and I'm looking at uh, that question there about the wide receiver room, you know, and I mean, you've added what, well, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You added eight receivers into this recruiting class. Um, so, yeah, that is a huge priority for this coaching staff. And pretty much every one of them is a burner. Um, they are almost all track guys, too. So you see the kind of emphasis that they're putting on uh, speed here. And obviously – a lot of size in these in, in the receivers as well. So, um, and, and that doesn't even include uh, Xavier Betts rejoining the program either. So that, that would be nine new receivers that they've added um, since last year. So, um, yeah, it, it's a huge priority, and that's a position that Matt Rule has always been pretty successful at in sending guys to play in the league. Never mind me wants to know about uh, Heinrich Harburg, who I've heard this too. Strongest arm in the room, fastest player. Yeah, I mean, Heinrich's, I've always, we've talked several years now about Heinrich and how much that I, I respect him as a player and really like his talent. And, and you know, I've seen him play a lot of football and, uh, obviously that was in high school because he hasn't got a lot of chances on the college field, but, um, I don't know. I, I, I kind of expected him to develop a little bit faster than he has, but, uh, you know what? Matt rule likes him a lot and, uh, he's definitely right in there. You know, he's, it's his job too. You go out and get the job, go prove yourself. Um, that's what this time of year is for. And, um, you know, he's always been a very hard worker and, and, and uh, a very coachable kid. And uh, we'll see, you know, maybe he takes a step forward. But I, I have to imagine that if he's not, um, I, you know, if he comes in to, after spring ball fifth on the depth chart, I got I to gotta imagine that he's going to have to look elsewhere, even though he's a, a Nebraska guy and, you know, homegrown guy and, you um, I don't know. I, I, you can't blame him if if you've been around for three years and you, you don't even you're not even the backup to the starter at this point. I you know you can't blame him. And Logan Smothers I think fits in that same mold as well. Is it uh, how much longer can you expect them to stay around if they're not going to be considered for uh, you know any real playing time unless there's injuries that that take place. All right, folks. I think people are just asking questions just to keep us on the line here. We've got. Uh... <laughs> I, and I do not know where Alante Brown is going. I mean, yeah, he, he went into the transfer portal and, and I haven't uh, seen any news on, on, on that any further. So, but that's also, I think that even that fits into with that wide receiver question that, that, uh, you know, Alante Brown was starting to, to actually, you know, come up with some uh, some good playing time and making some plays. But I think, you know, when you when you add a bunch of more, uh, you know, eight or nine new receivers into your room um, and, and with one name by the name of Billy Kemp that uh, basically is is the same type of player as you are, but but holds all the uh, return records at Virginia and all the receiving records at Virginia. I think that maybe uh, was about the final straw for Alante. So uh, I wish the best of luck to him. I uh, wish he could have, you know, finished his career here at Nebraska, but 
you know, that's the day and age that we're in now. Uh, it's really easy to uh, just up and go somewhere else for a better opportunity. All right, folks, appreciate you being here. And again, help us out. Uh, we would love to grow this show. I know it's the dead time, but uh, that's going to stop here very soon as we get uh, into spring practice. And then recruiting will start to pick up in, in terms of, of course, transfer portal right after spring practice. And then just flat out recruiting, as we saw the Huskers pick up their first commit this week. And uh, we'll have much to talk about going forward. And we do our next preview, position preview, next uh, next Tuesday. Running backs. There we go. Greg, appreciate you being here, as always. Make I it this happen. Next week, everyone, make it on back. Bring some friends. We'll see you then. 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Moonbot, thank you. Ben, Joel, Bonelead, Cornfed, Moonbot, never mind me. William, thank you so much for being here, everyone. We'll see you back here next Tuesday.